Okay guys, so here's the table. I've got it set up on this table with plastic covering it because it's going to be a mess again. I'm working in my office to do this project. So as most of you know, stripping is pretty messy. Um, and so these are the steps I take to make sure things don't get too bad. You can see the plastic runs up the back. I'm up against the closet wall. Um, so I taped it partway up the back as well to protect that. And I have a towel, big towel down on the floor to protect the floor. So those are all the steps that I've done to get started here. First thing I'm going to do is, you can see, there's a lot of dust and dirt on this thing from being stored all these years in various places in my house. Um, so I'm going to clean it thoroughly just with a damp rag, no soap or anything, just to get that dust off, dust and surface dirt so the stripper doesn't have to work that much harder. Um, so yeah, so we'll do that. And as you can see, this table folds up really small, which I, it's part of the appeal of it to me. So, again, I'm just hitting the more dusty places. Alrighty, there's that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking it actually all apart. And you can see here they painted everything. They painted the screw heads, they painted everything. So it's going to be a thorough stripping job. And it's already pretty loose. Um, some of these dowels are, like this one's already come unglued. So it's not going to be too hard to disassemble. But if these dowels are tight, I am not going to tear it apart and re-glue them. If they're already solid, we'll just leave them. If they're loose, then we'll re-glue them. But uh, let's get started here. This one's already most of the way out. So we will take him out. Now this also has couple washers so we'll keep those as well You can tell that these are old flathead screws, single slot. So this table is older than I expected it to be, um, just looking at the screws. So that's a good sign. We like old tables. I'm going to shut the camera off and continue to get this disassembled and we'll catch up after that. Okay, now oh, we've got it all disassembled. Now, one thing I forgot to mention is these little magnetic trays are awesome to put the screws and nuts and bolts and whatever project you're working on. They come in single and double, but I just love those because then they don't roll all over and you don't lose them. But there is one area that we're going to need to repair first before we do any stripping and that's right here. This little piece of wood is loose. And so I will get some glue, clamp that. Actually, I don't have many clamps. And because that's on a strange angle, it's like, how do we clamp that? So we have to be a little creative. So let me go get the glue and I'll show you how we're gonna fix that without clamps. Okay, so this piece, it's basically loose. The only thing that's holding on it holding it together was the paint. So uh, I'm going to spread some glue on here. Again, any kind of wood glue would work fine. Tight bond or this happens to be weld bond, which is multi-surface. It's a little tackier glue than 
some of the others. It'll work just fine. Spread that around. And again, I'm checking just to make sure that it's even on all the surfaces, which it is. Press that in hard. And again, because this is a tacky glue, it doesn't slide off. If it's a wood glue that's thinner and not as tacky, it's going to slide around on you. Um, so then, you know, once you get it in place, check it again. Yep, that's all good. And just pull the tape really tightly on there. And that's going to hold it pretty good. That's not a stress point. And again, it was broken a long time ago, and there's little gaps in there which we'll fill later. And then, while that glue dries, we're just going to rest it like this. Because that's not really a... Because the glue is going to do the work. I'm not too worried about having it clamped really tightly. That should do fine. It's not a structural point, whereas like if it was in here where the screws are, which is typical, you'll get a break along those areas many times. That's a structural thing, and then you need to make sure it's glued good and tight. This one's not so structural. So that should hold it there. Okay? All right. So we have it all in pieces. I thought these were really cute. These are the little dowels. They're actually wooden dowels with a little mushroom cap on top that hold the two pivoting legs in. So they just slide down these uh, two eye hooks. So it's very simple in design and the way it works. So it's pretty cool. So, all right. So now we'll get ready for the next step, which is Bring the stripper on and check it, you know, checking it out to make sure there's no other areas that we need to repair first. Um, but when I took it apart, that looked like about the only area. And these that are already on there, they're good. They're tight, not loose. Same with these. So no need to disassemble that. This center section, uh, which is the solid section, is also solid. It's not loose at all, so we don't need to re-glue any of that. So we can strip that as one unit. And then these are the other two units. This dowel is loose, so we'll pull that one out. And you can see somebody, when they painted this, had a major drip there. Um, and then this other unit has some loose joints. So this one will be one more. This joint right here needs to be... Oh, somebody put a staple in there. To hold it. Hmm. That's interesting. So maybe because of those staples, it's going to tear everything out. If I try to tear that apart, I don't know if that shows up on camera, but they put two staples on each side of it sometime in the past when it got loose. And rather than doing a proper glue job, they stapled it to try to hold the dowel into the brace. So I think what we'll do is we'll try to squeeze some glue in there. We're not going to be able to clamp it. So there's always going to be that little gap in there. I have to think about how to fix that. Because again, I don't have a full wood shop anymore. I don't have all the tools that I used to. I used to have pieces of veneer that I could slide in there to tighten up that joint. I don't have those anymore. So I'm going to have to ponder this. Because if I try to pull these out, I'm going to gouge it, make big holes. Hmm. Time to think. Okay, I decided to go ahead and start stripping. And I'm using a, it's called a citrus stripper. It doesn't have the methylene chloride or the NMP, which is the harsh, severely toxic <laughs> uh, chemicals in it. So it's, you know, uses more natural elements. Um, this is in a spray can. I don't know how well this is going to work. It's my first time using it this way. I've used others in the paste form, and that's worked fine. Um, so 
So this is the spray can. So I just started to spray some of the pieces here. So let's see how long it takes. I'm gonna move this one over here. I already sprayed those, so. Because you're supposed to shake the can good, so. coated or give it a good coat I don't know how I did on that one. anyway and then it says to wait about 30 or more minutes so we'll let this sit for for a while and see what happens so and again I'm doing one side at a time so I'll strip this side that last piece that I glued that'll be done later so we'll do this side and we'll flip them over to the other side so I'll be back Okay, it's been a little over half an hour, and uh, it looks like this is doing really well as we start taking this old finish off. Oops, I don't have my little container open. It's always good to have a little container to scrape the, the stuff off into. Good to use a plastic scraper if you can rather than a metal scraper that way it doesn't gouge the wood i've done that a few times in my life oops missed so this seems to be working really well with just one application We'll just continue to uh, scrape down the piece, pieces, if you will, because there's a number of them. We'll catch it when it's done. Okay, now we um, have the paint pretty well stripped off. But one of the things I noticed is on the top, I have reapplied more stripper because it wasn't affecting the original or the, the surface finish from the on the top and you can tell it was you know just from the colors and whatever it was probably a lot of water stain and fading it probably had a plant sitting on top of it in the sun and that's probably why they painted it eventually so i reapplied the stripper on top um let it set longer and it doesn't seem to be having too much of an effect a little bit but not not very much so we have several things we could do we could just let it sit and see what happens after you know several hours if it starts to break it down at all or what i'm going to try first is as many times in furniture, you know, like before 1930s, um, they were finished with shellac, which denatured alcohol will dissolve. Now the legs seem to be just fine. The finish does seem to be coming off. So I think that is the original finish, which is the shellac. But I think the top of this was at some point probably refinished. So it might be a polyurethane on top, which is a lot harder to break down without some nasty chemicals um but i'm going to try this and see if the what the denatured alcohol um does at this point on the surface i'm using steel wool and this particular one is a double lot steel wool um again because i'm trying to get the finish off i want to see if this has any effect
far as on the top, it does not appear to have any effect on the top. I'm going to go to this leg. And yeah, see right away it pulls off the original finish off of the leg. So the legs still have this, what I believe to be the shellac finish on it. That the denatured alcohol just takes right off. So I'm going to clean the bottom half of this with the denatured alcohol. <clears throat> and then we'll see what we're going to have to do to the top. We might have to scrape the top. Um, so, <clears throat> but let me get the legs cleaned up. I'll wipe off the rest of the stripper on the top, get them all cleaned up, and then we'll figure out what to do with the top finish. <clears throat> this will be interesting. So stay tuned. Okay, folks, so here's where we're at. Um, I got all the lower parts stripped now and cleaned up partially. I still need to go over it with some mineral spirits to clear off all of the old stripper. But you can see like here, there's still some of the old original finish on there. So I need to work at getting that off. And then um, figure out, you know, if I need to sand it before we um, do the finish on it. If I want to stain it, if I want to, you know, leave it natural wood, all that kind of stuff. But first we got to get it all cleaned off to really know for sure how we're going to deal with that. And then on the top, remember I said the top was a different finish, and it is. And the stripper that I'm using, the citrus strip, is working on it. It's just really slow. So I left it for a couple hours, because um, you can leave the stripper on, it says, from 30 minutes to 24 hours. Um, I left it on for several hours, but it got really sticky. So when I try to take it off now, it's really... It just rolls up. So I'm pretty sure the finish is a polyurethane and the stripper isn't fully done working on it. So what I did was I reapplied it um, after cleaning off some of it. Anyway, so I reapplied it and I'm covering it with uh, plastic so to keep it from drying out as much. And we'll leave it like this for several hours, maybe even into tomorrow. And we'll see how well that does. So the stripper is working on it. It just is going to take a long time to break down this polyurethane finish. So anyway, so that's where we're at. So the next step will be to, to uh, get it all cleaned up, reassembled, and then do the finishing. Okay, guys, here's where we're at now. I got the finish stripped off the top. And uh, what's great about the way we did this is that it still has the walnut look to it because I haven't sanded it and I'm not going to I like this walnut look um which is be the original finish on it um it was a struggle getting the old one off but we got it off and then what I'll do you can see the legs are actually of a lighter color than the top so they actually stained the legs or to make them match the top so that's what we'll do um I still need to finish getting some of the old finish off of the legs, but at least we got the top done now. So I'm waiting for it to, I cleaned it with mineral spirits. We're waiting for that to dry. And then I'll go over it one more time with, um, to clean it off. And then we'll continue working on the legs to get them ready to go. But the other thing I wanted to show you is that this piece actually went, has had multiple layers of finish on it. Of course, there was the green paint that we dealt with. There's this original um, shellac finish with the walnut color. But there's also, and I'm not sure how well it shows up here. I'll try to get a little closer to the light. You can see it here. There's that reddish tone on there. And that is actually over the top of the shellac finish. And what it is is because furniture is very trendy in the sense that people try to keep up with the latest fashion styles. Um, and I can't tell you the exact period, but I've run into this in multiple pieces that date probably sometime in the 20s, 1920s, 30s, somewhere in there. They would take an existing piece of furniture and then coat it with a, another more mahogany reddish tone to bring it 
up to date for that particular style. And they didn't strip the old finish, they just put this red finish. I assume it's a shellac-based finish over the top of the original finish and um, to give it more of a mahogany look as opposed to a brown, you know, walnut or oak style. So I just thought it was interesting. This particular piece has remnants of that and it's, you can see more remnants on the back of the top. You can see like here where these, these red tones mixed throughout and that's also a result of them putting on an additional coat it's not the original finish but it's an additional one that they did later to try to make it more palatable to the um, fashion trends at the time so anyway just thought i'd share that with you okay folks i got a little too excited on with this last step or this next step and uh forgot to film but what i did was um Started the finishing process with um, Danish oil. This is a dark walnut, which matches what the top color already was. So what I'm trying to do is now get the base closer to what the top is done. The base is made out of a different wood. Um, the spindles are oak. I believe the um, legs here, the carved legs, are actually maple. It's a very hard, dense wood. The oak. It's pretty obvious from the grain on the spindles. So there's three different kinds of woods because the, then the top of it is pine. So the, the pine naturally takes the stain deeper, although I didn't really stain this much. Um, so I'm trying to get the color on the legs closer to the top. They're not going to be a match, but I'm trying to get them closer. And if... Um, if it doesn't look very good after the Danish stain, if it's still too light, I did get some dark antique walnut um, tinted um, polyurethane so that it's it will actually, the coloring is in the finish, which will give it a darker uh, look overall. So I'm hoping that between all of these different methods, we can get it pretty close to looking the same color on all the different types of woods that this was made out of. Okay, folks, here's another tip. Like, these screws have paint on the end of them. And rather than trying to strip them or whatever, here's a real quick, easy way to get that paint off of there. Let's take a piece of sandpaper. These happen to have a flat head, so they're easier. Rub it a few times over there, and it gets the paint right off. This is a pretty coarse sandpaper. It'd actually work a little better if you had a finer sandpaper but um but yeah that's a quick easy way to clean up your screws screw heads thanks bye okay folks here's a little not i got the top assembled back together but here's just kind of my philosophy and there's many different philosophies when it comes to refinishing restoring furniture but one of mine is you know like this table is probably 100 years old give or take and it's lived a full life, you know, over those hundred years. And so what I, I like to do is leave some of that history uh, rather than refinishing and making it look brand new. Like here, there's an old repair that was filled um, at some point along the edge there. I left that, you know, it's something you could take out and redo. You know, there's other dings. There's other scratches. There's still on the back. There's areas where I didn't clear off all of the old green paint. Again, that's part of the history of this table. It was painted green. Areas where still the red shows through, you know, so that, so that uh, you know, many years from now when somebody else goes to refinish it again, they can see some of the history of the chair. I kind of like keeping the story going, you know. But anyway... Just my thoughts. Thanks. Okay, guys, here's the finished table. Um, it's looking really nice. Um, the legs are still lighter color than the top, but I kind of like it that way. Typically, you want your top lighter than the base because your top gets more exposure and typically fades a little bit over time. So anyway, doesn't really matter. I really like the way this turned out and uh
you guys. Here's the table all finished. Looks really good. One side drops down. Let's see if I can do this one handed. And then you pull out on the other leg. And now she's a complete table. Very cute. I like it. Glad to have this project finally finished. And I hope you enjoyed.